Diamondback terrapin is North America's only truly estuarine species of turtle. It's the one species that occurs and spends its entire life in estuarine environments. My name is Randy Chambers. I'm the director of the Keck Environmental Field Lab at the College of William and Mary. She is cute. For terrapin conservation, there are a couple of threats, but by far, far, the, the biggest impact is going to be the loss of turtles, the drowning of turtles in commercial pots that are used by both the commercial crab fishery, but also by the recreational fishery as well. And because the pots are submerged underwater for 24 hours at a time, while they're being fished for crabs, any turtles that get caught in there eventually will drown. All right, so a commercial crab trap looks something like this, and it has these funnel openings down here, and there's one on each side of this square-shaped trap, and Diamondback terrapins, here's a diamondback terrapin shell. This is a male terrapin, they're fairly small. Uh, very easily fit through the funnel opening and if they get into the trap, then they are stuck inside the trap and they will then swim up into the trap and try to find access to air. But because the trap is completely underwater, they can't get to air. When we do our studies, we attach a four foot cylinder of chicken wire that's eight inches across and then if this trap is underwater and a turtle gets trapped inside the trap, it can swim up the tube to the surface and breathe so it does not eventually drown in the trap. So the bycatch reduction devices that have been designed restrict the opening in the funnel of a crab trap and that will keep terrapins from getting into the pots, whereas crabs are a little bit more low slung and therefore can slide into these restricted openings a lot easier. So historically, bycatch reduction devices have been constructed of rectangular plastic, such as this, and these rectangular plastic bycatch reduction devices, or BRDs, are installed in the funnels of the crab traps. This one is a two inch by six inch BRD, and then there are smaller designs that are one and three quarter inch by about five inches across. This year, we decided that perhaps the oval shape of the funnel can be matched by an oval shape of a bycatch reduction device. And we wanted to test whether or not the oval design excluded turtles and maintained the crab catch to the same extent or even better than the rectangular bycatch reduction devices. So working with two William & Mary undergraduate students this summer, we looked at the crab catch and the turtle bycatch in four treatment groups compared with a control group that had no bycatch reduction devices in the funnels of the traps. So every morning we go out to the site, we take the canoe, and then paddle out to each of the traps that are set. We pull up the traps and the crabs, and if there are any turtles in the traps, we shake them out into the canoe. We measure the crabs for their total body length. He is 12.2. Carapace width is 7.2. And then for any turtles that were caught, we measure them for their total body length, total carapace length, their total maximum carapace width, and then the height of the shell, because it's the height of the shell that is potentially restricting the entry of turtles into pots that have a bycatch reduction device on them. We found that the two inch bycatch reduction devices, irrespective of whether they were oval or rectangular, decreased the overall turtle bycatch significantly. In addition, the one and three quarter inch bycatch reduction devices really reduced the bycatch of terrible. So the overall conclusion was that there really was no advantage to having an oval bycatch reduction device relative to the rectangular one with respect to the exclusion of turtles. They both work equally well. The advantage for the oval BRD is its ease of installation. We know how many commercial crab pots are fished. It's on the order of millions of pots per day. So you can imagine that there are large numbers of turtles that are lost. For recreational crabbers, no one knows. The research into bycatch reduction devices has demonstrated unequivocally that they work, that they are able to reduce bycatch of terrapins, but the regulations that are invoked by different states varies by state. Of all those states in the mid-Atlantic region, there's only one that doesn't have a bycatch reduction device regulation, and that is Virginia. Most Virginia 
commercial crabbers have argued uh, for generations that there is no problem, that they never catch a diamondback terrapin. And that crab lobby has been very strong in Virginia indeed, and as a consequence, the Marine Resources Commission has not been convinced that there is a problem. It's almost on a one-on-one -on -one basis that we've been able to convince individuals that this is something that they need to address. But more broadly, I think the more opportunities and the more times that there are that people report seeing terrapins, then I think the overall education of the community will increase. And it's not until we get to that level before I think there will be a general push more amongst conservationists, uh, environmentalists, uh, and the general community that will say, this is something that we need to do.